Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hey, there was a year called 2020. That year was restoration and demonstration. I had to lose something so that when it comes back, I will know it is God, not the situation and the circumstance. I'm so glad that you have come to worship with us today. And uh, we are still wishing those that are traveling Merry Christmas so that wherever they will be, that God is going to be with them. And because you don't know whether your neighbor will be around, let's assume the neighbor we wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's tell those that are uh, in the ha- at home and watching from wherever, hospital, car, whatever, uh, in any institution, let's wish them a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you have your plan with you? It's a list of things you hope and expect to do. Perhaps in education you want to pursue higher education. Or maybe you're in college, you are praying that God will give you the grace to graduate. Or is it family perhaps? And some of you are saying 2021 will be my year. I'll get married. Or you are saying 2021 will be my year. I'll have children. Or is it perhaps a plan on your career? You want to move on your profession. You want to to be a senior something or chief something or acting something? Or is it perhaps recreational? You want it to achieve something in your sport or in the vocation that God has given you? What's your plan? How important is that plan to you? How would you feel if through a change in circumstance or by conviction, you knew that glorifying God most fully in your life would lead you to abandon all those plans. How would you respond to God? How would you feel towards God? For some of us, having seen that happen already, how have you responded to that? See, in the Bible where we are going to read, we see an angel, Gabriel, announcing God's plan for Mary to become pregnant. And pregnancy for unmarried girl then as much as now is, we will call it problematic, if you like. For a barren woman to get pregnant, whoa, Wow, every person in the village would know. For a married woman to get pregnant, oh, it's something. But you see, God changed Mary's plan dramatically. And how does she respond? Because that's a question we want to address ourselves. And why does she respond the way she does? And what lesson does Mary provide for us as God changes our plans? We will answer those questions and any other that is going to come along the way. And we will answer them by pursuing two points only. Point number one, God's inconvenient grace. And two, the joy of humility. The joy of humility. I want us to read the the Bible, Luke chapter number 1, and we are looking, Luke chapter number 1, we are looking at verse 26 to 56. What a long passage, but I would like all of us to stand, we read those 
verses. Let's all stand and read those verses together. Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 56. Dio ni mesema? Najua sa ingine unaangalia watu unaona kwani ni mesema nini? Kwani ni mesema jina yangu ni Alice? Let's read together now. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greetings this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold thy maid servant of the Lord. Let be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with the haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he shall send away empty. He has helped his servant Israel. Let, let's read the last one. To do me vizuri kama to 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 iso me vizuri kama to sa tu kotaeri kukaachini. And Mary. Mary. 
Our Father, again, that's the word we want you to speak to us through. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You can sit with your smile, though covered with your barakoa. The text that we have read opens up and takes us to Elizabeth. The Bible says she is six months pregnant. Now, when Mary heard the message, I told you she is a single girl and she has been told you are going to be pregnant. Now she is running away. Because she is also told there is a barren woman, your relative, and she knows the barren woman. Maybe she had not even heard that. So she is running first of all to confirm and know whether that is true. And we are looking at God's inconvenient grace. God inconvenient grace. Gabriel appears saying, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. And Mary is frightened. She can't figure out how she is favored, how she is the recipient of grace. So Gabriel has to explain to her in verse 30, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor or you have found grace. The expression found favor is common in the Old Testament, appearing over 40 times. The same Greek words written here is found also in the Greek Old Testament again and again and also in the New Testament. The expression is used of finding favor both with men and with God. It does not mean full of grace. In Genesis 6 verse 8, for example, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Similarly, Moses is said to have found favor with God in Exodus 33 and verse 17. Surely, neither Noah or Moses merited God's favor. Instead, he showed grace on them. Somebody can say, and Jimmy has found favor. I don't know what you would say about yourself. 2020 comes to an end because I have found favor. 2020 did not consume me because I found God's grace. The favor of the Lord has been upon me. So Gabriel is saying, Mary, God is going to show you an imaginable grace. God will give you a privilege so far beyond you, you are deserving that you will be overwhelmed by what God is going to do. The angel is explaining his grace in verse 31 to 33. This is what he says. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him, to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom shall not have an end. That is just favor. That from the blue, a lady that not, was not waiting for it. A lady whose plan was to get married. And you know when ladies are getting married. Situnakuwa na wasuwasi mwingi. Ata tukijuliza, uu jamaa ni kunidanganya, ananidanganya ama ni kweli. Unajua kuna jamaa wanaweza kuwa malaika. Siku ya arusi. Alafu hiyo siku nyingine anarudi kule alikuwa kwa anasema nilikuja church kwa sababu yako. Si nimekupata? Sasa. Sasa uwezi enda mahali. Si bishop alisema forever until death do part. Sasa lazima mmoja wetu siku atakufa ndio utahama. And then you imagine 40 years married to this man or whatever. Now this girl had her own problem. She was thinking about her marriage and planning her marriage and all the relatives were ready. But she was also coming from a very, very poor background. She needed to be told more by the angel. And the angel says, you are a lucky one. You are a lucky one. Actually, among all women, you are luckier than all of them. Because the child you are going to carry, his kingdom will have no end. Now you would imagine Mary would say, Hallelujah. But the whole thing is like, you know, for me, and many people now know that, 
If you want me to, to buy anything you are selling, you have to be careful. Because one time I was conned, so I know. So when anybody comes and tells me how rich I'm going to be because I'm going to sell this or sell that and have this and so on, I normally have a deeper sense inside that tells me he or new wrongo. For example, if you come and tell me, there are people who came a couple of years ago and they bought me dinner five times and I took Alice, all the best hotels in this city. I don't know who had told them I have money anyway. I look like I do, and I do. Praise God. <laughs> but every time they would start talking, they had very good language. But I would tell Alice, if someone tells you you are poor because you have houses for rent, that person is not truthful. If somebody, because they would tell you, you are, you are a poor man because you have houses in Dadora, but they tell you you are going to build ones for rent, then you wonder. Zangu ni umaskini, zenu ni utajiri. If you come and tell me, give me one million, and then we'll be, we will work so hard for you, in four years, it will be 12 million. I will not buy that. Because shares, if you tell me you are buying shares, which country are you buying shares? For example, if somebody is selling shares to you today, People are looking for BBI. They cannot invest here. They are not so sure what BBI can eat and what BBI cannot eat. I'm telling you. So if you have been conned, bas, they dink something, alafu unatoa pesa zako, alafu unanza kularamika bure. So Mary, here you are. All oh, what Mary has been told is awesome. She's overwhelmed. Me, you. Yes. So the, remember, the angel is telling Mary, your son will be great. He will be the son of the Most High. He will be also the son of David if you don't understand. He will take the throne of David, the one that you have been looking for, the Messiah. He is coming. Mary, now hears the angel say, her son is the long-awaited Messiah. A young girl from nowhere, a girl from no prominence, Chosen by God to be the mother of the Messiah. Woo! But remember how Zechariah responded when he was told that his barren wife would have a son. He asked, how shall I know this is true? Verse number 18 of Luke chapter number 1. He's asking for sign. Asking for the angel's credential. Wewe ni nani? Baka malaika nasema, mimi nakaga na mungu. Mimi nimetumwa kutoa kwa mungu. Na kwa sababu unaringariga na utaki kunielewa. Mudomo ikaguzwa. Kuna kakitu ka, kakaguzwa switch ya kuongea na kuzwa. Weo na switch. Na ikiguzwa na mungu. Hautaongea. That's. So does Mary ask for a sign? Not at all. She is just confused. She doesn't see how this is going to be possible. Luke has already told us that she is a virgin. Her response to Gabriel shows that it is clear that, that this child is to be fathered by Joseph, she asked. Because she doesn't, she's not ready for it. How shall this be since I am a virgin? She is saying, I don't get the biological here. I don't. Gabriel tells her what will happen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the son of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Overshadow may seem like a strange word, but it is used several times in the scripture to indicate God's presence. For example, Exodus 40 verse 35, when the Israelites complete construction of the tabernacle, the clouds of God's glory settles on it. The Greek translated of, translation of the Old Testament uses the same word. In Luke, the same word is used in chapter 9, verse 34, when a cloud overshadows Peter, James, and John on the Mount of trans trans Transfiguration. Right before God speaks to them out of the cloud, thus overshadow draws attention to the miracle of God's presence. So Mary, God's presence is coming. Mary did not ask for a sign. Why? Because Gabriel 
tells her in verse number 36, telling her of her relative Elizabeth. She was barren. This is an example for what you, 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 you are saying it can't be, it, it will not be possible. So the Gabriel is telling Mary, hey Mary, nothing is impossible with God. I don't know what God has told you that he is going to do the plans that you have. Has God spoken? If he has spoken, even those plans can come to pass. How could Mary have reacted to this news? She could have said, what? Me? Pregnant? What? What will Joseph think? What will my parents think? You know, I was looking forward to life as a carpenter's wife in Nazareth. Can't you just leave me alone and pick up another girl? Maybe that's what she would have said. Or she would have answered like Moses in Exodus 4 verse 13. Because Moses is trying to say, I cannot even speak. I'm not able. I cannot handle. But how, how, how would you respond to that? Maybe the question would be, have you responded that way when God convicts you of something? Maybe of your own sin. Maybe of your pursuit of him. Maybe of your service to him. Something you should be doing. He's telling you, how have you responded? Do you respond, that's for the other people. That's not for me. God, just leave me alone now. I'm doing well enough just as I am. Thank you. Leave me alone. But Mary says in verse 38, and this is very, very profound. I am the Lord's slave. Let it be done according to your word. In other words, Mary is saying, right where I am, I'm ready now. There is a great inconvenient, but there will also be great inconvenient privilege. And this is now where on her radar screen, she had many expectations, many plans for her, but Mary, showing great faith and wisdom, forgets those plans she has, and she moves on to her faith in God. God's promise for her, and God's promise for her people. You know, wisdom, if you like, is seeing who God is, that's wisdom, seeing how he rules the world, that's wisdom, and you respond accordingly, that's wisdom. She has learned God's character maybe through the stories that she had heard as a young girl, but she gets to a place that with all the inconvenience, she has wisdom. If it is God who is saying it, if my, my relative Elizabeth is expectant, then I think I want to allow the Lord to have his own way. Shame, yes. Embarrassment, yes. But I have to run away to see the testimony. You know, I normally say this. If somebody, God, has done something and they tell you, that's the right person to walk with. Ask them how God did it because it will build your faith. The second uh, top, uh, the topic that I want to follow through is the joy of humility. I told you there are questions we are answering, but we can answer them with, with those two. The inconvenience, grace, and the joy of humility. Like most dialogues in, dialogues in Scripture, it is highly unlikely that Luke gives us a complete account of every word spoken. He doesn't. He just picks what is important for us. But Mary leaves. She goes with haste to see Elizabeth, and no one else likely to believe her story than Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth, alikuja kambi utapata mtoto. Na akapata mtoto. Na aliyekuwa akuja kumuambia hakuweza kuongea alimuonyesha sign. Sijui alimuonyesha mtoto na I, I know Esther Esther is around. I saw Esther somewhere. Ule wa sign. Unajua sasa yeye anaweza jua kuonyesha hizo ishara. But some of us have no idea. Unaweza kuwa ukionyesha uonyeshe the wrong sign. Iwe ni mutungi iwe ni nini you know. But when Zakaria came alionyesha hizo sign and sure enough so Elizabeth is carrying a baby and Elizabeth, so Mary can explain to her what happened. 
So Mary enters Elizabeth's house and greets her. Say hi. And when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now what else? What other miracles are you talking about? Here I am. My, my baby, Mary, my baby is hardly a week. You know, and when we were in Israel, we were, we were shown the kajani, the, the karut that Mary left, you know, Nazareth, going to, you know, to visit uh, his, uh, the relative. And she went, she goes, and when she gets there, she greets. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. Permit me to give you a brief footnote here. Verse number 15 tells us that the infant, infant John is filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Is that not what the Bible says? So Mary comes to greet Elizabeth and the baby inside, filled with the Holy Spirit, causes the mother to be filled with the Holy Spirit too. In verse 41, the Bible is saying that that baby full of the Holy Ghost leaps with, with, inside Mary and no wonder then usiniambia mtoto anakuwa mtoto kwa sababu amefikisha miaka 10 miaka miezi 9 unataka kumuua kabla kwa sababu huyu miezi sita anacheza mpira kule ndani ya tumbo you know ana ana enjoy na kucelebrate na kuoshe bamejaza wana roho mtakatifu let me not go that way so Elizabeth also makes a, a clear response she, she, to, to what is happening you know Mary call, Mary, and, and she calls Mary the mother of my Lord. She knows Mary's son will be the Messiah, the long-awaited descendant of David. So verse number 45 highlights the reason for her to honor Mary and for us to honor Mary too. Not because she was perpetually a virgin, for scripture says no such things. Not because she, was, she had no other challenges, no. For scriptures that says what was happening to her, God only could do it. Because what is impossible with people is possible with God. Not because she is full of grace, overflowing with merit, but she is flowing with the favor. Oh, I wish we can tell each other, brother, what you need is the favor of God. You, you don't need wealth. All what you need is the favor of the Lord. And I, I pray that you receive the favor of God. That you, 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 you are what we, you are because of the grace of God and the favor of, of the Lord. Not because of what people have done. No wonder this is what uh, Elizabeth says. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. She is trying to encourage Mary. Where? Amini video review ambiwa. Amini. No wonder the Bible says for three months Mary stayed there. So Mary is a woman of faith. She believes, she acts on that belief. Her plans were turned upside down and she followed God faithfully. She's a wonderful example for a woman of faith. I pray that you and I can be men and women of faith. Of course, if you have been following to this point, you might wonder, Bishop, what was the title of what you are sharing? The title of what I'm sharing has to do with where we are getting right now. Magnifying the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Verse 46, the Bible says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Verse 47, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Here, here is a woman that has been told all this. The angel spoke, Elizabeth has confirmed, and she just fall flat and magnifies the Lord. Mary reinstates her idea because there are two lines one, and they are parallel to each other. Like many verses in the book of Proverbs. For example, this is what he, she says. Mary reinstates her idea but with enough cha changes to clarify the meaning of the first statement. He says, my soul. This parallels my spirit. My soul. My spirit. She said, it is not only my soul or oh, my spirit. Everything within me, my soul magnifies the Lord. 
And then she says, my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. She, she is trying to say, you cannot change me. It's so deep within me. The second and the other parallel here, st standing for the name of God, Yahweh, the God of the covenant, is Lord. But it is also paralleled by God, my savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, Yahweh. And my spirit rejoices in God, the Messiah, Yahweh. Oh my goodness. She wants to say, what my spirit is feeling right now is to bubble with joy. I magnify the name of the Lord. And I pray this Christmas, we can join Mary to magnify the name of the Lord. Because whatever Mary is carrying for us is awesome for us. The verbs are the most interesting here. The first verb, magnifies, is in parallel with another verb, rejoices in. So the question is, what does magnify mean? Yesterday, I, there are some, there are some two drugs I haven't started using because I had not read the small lines. Are you getting the point? To magnify is simply for those that are having challenges in reading the scripture, you can come with a magnified glass if your Bible has a conspiracy. Uwe unaweka tu juu yake, utafuata pole pole, utaelewa. So what does magnify mean? A magnifying glass increases the apparent size of anything we look at through it. But how can Mary magnify the Lord? Isn't he already as big as he can get? Let me tell you, sometimes we need him bigger. Because the bigger the problem, we need him to be bigger. Fill the whole space. And that is what Mary is saying. I want God, you to be bigger. I don't know what people are going to say. I'll be pregnant. But I want you to be bigger. Joseph might leave me. But I want you to be bigger. Fellowship might kick me out of church. But I want you to be bigger. What do you want? Is this a small God or a bigger God? I want a bigger God. Because when he is big, I can tell people, Muoneni, si uyu. Uyu. Big God. That's what Mary is trying to say. We magnify God, right? The way a telescope magnifies a star. Let me tell you, those stars we are told they are huge. But we don't see them huge, do we? Now for you to see some of them, you have to have a telescope. Inaivruta hiyo kitu unayona. Bas. So we magnify God the way telescope magnifies the star. The star is huge, so huge, it is beyond our comprehension. Yet it appears to us as a tiny speck because it is so far. The telescope makes it appear a bit, a bit larger to us and thus a bit more like it is real self. Just the same way to God. We magnify him. And he's still, he's not far. But it is us, we need him big around us. And Mary says, at this point, I want to magnify. Secondly, I want to rejoice. I want to be crazy for God. You know, when I, when I was thinking about this song of Mary, I asked myself, when do you sing? Naimbaga wakatigani. Okay, let me try a song and you tell me when you can sing this one. Darutaga we rotali mushara. When would you sing that kind of a song? <laughs> that I was working without no pay. You would sing it when? Tell me when you are with your barako. You sing it when? You are? 
Unajua barakoa kweli nimeona huwezi sikia vile watu wanasema. All right. Amen itendea amen itendea when do you sing that The Lord has done it So Mary is singing a song to magnify the Lord because of God's favor Now a lot of us should have a song to magnify the Lord because of his favor This Christmas my prayer is that you and I who magnify the Lord. Hey, let's not magnify corona. Ni kadogo sana. Usitubie magnifying glass bo na corona. Itakustua. Wachana na ayo. You know, have you ever seen this advertisement? Watoto wanambio waoge na deto. Waki magnify uto tumududu. Si unaunaga, they are very ugly. And the truth is, Ziko hapa, hapa, hapa. I mean, that's the truth. The truth is, ziko humu, humu. But because they are not magnified, zika hivyo, hivyo. Let's magnify the Lord. I wish then I, we could use the opposite. Opposite ya hiyo. Nikufanya hiyo kitu du ni kabisa. So for you that are listening to us from home, I don't know what your take is, but my take is, I will magnify the Lord. Would you join me to magnify the Lord? That we can magnify his name, we can rejoice in him. Not because everything is okay, no. But we want to magnify the Lord. We want to sing, to sing to the Lord. There is another song I also thought about when I was thinking about this sermon. Kuna kegine ukipigwa na majibariti? <laughs> May God help us to magnify the name of the Lord. Kutakuwa baridi? Yes. But let us magnify the Lord. There will be lack? Yes. But let us magnify the Lord and rejoice with God of our salvation. So that we can hear Moses telling us, stand still and see the salvation of of the Lord. And then we ask him, what will this be salvation? And then we hear him saying, this corona that disturbed you 2020, you will not see them anymore. Let's magnify the Lord and rejoice in the name of the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, what a Sunday. And dear Father, like you met Mary doing her business, preparing for her marriage, and you inconvenienced her but with your favor. Oh God, I pray that you will inconvenience many people. Actually, all of us, inconvenience us with your favor because when your favor is upon us, there are great things that are going to happen to us. And also that we would rejoice in humility, that you have chosen the lowly and exalted the lowly. You have lifted us up so that we can reach many people with the gospel of the kingdom. We want to thank you for 2020. When people are saying they want to forget 2020, we want to remember 2020 as the year that every day we walk. We knew there was an enemy called Corona. We called on God and God gave us victory. Therefore, we want to thank you and to give you praise as we end this year because you are God and beside you there is none other. May you release your blessing upon your people as they enjoy and celebrate Christmas 2020 in Jesus' name. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.